Evening, everybody. How's it going? Welcome. It's uh, it's kind of crack, and welcome to what's going to be um, throughout this year. I'm hoping a uh, a brand new series. Seeing as my kind of sole mission this year is to try my best uh, to knock off as many of the Eclipse Comics titles as possible. Um, I figured as I'm picking them up, especially now that I have a bunch of them and I've got um, some completed mini series and some completed longer series, uh, I figured it was a good time to let's focus on Eclipse. Um, so for this first episode, we're going to be looking at uh, Detectives Inc. Um, we're going to be looking at laser eraser and press button and we're going to be looking at uh, mad dogs um, interesting stuff overall uh, I think we'll start with I'm just going to jump right into it not much of a, an introduction here one is not necessary let's get this out of the way let's get this out of the way uh, there we go so, I started off with these. I do have the graphic novel somewhere as well, too, but um, I'm not sure where I put it. I believe there was a graphic novel for each. So, there, there was a, the first one for Detective Inc. was just a two-issue series, a mini-series. And then the kind of second volume that I think took place about five years after the first was just three-issue mini-series. Um, so this first two issues is uh, a storyline called um, Remembrance of Threatening Green. And it's uh, Don McGregor and Marshall Rogers. So Don McGregor came up with the idea of Detectives, Inc. I believe, looking at my notes here, uh, 1969. And he was doing some Super 8 millimeter films. Um, and in 1970, there was a kind of crude photocopied version of this story that appeared. Um, I believe this was one of the first, if not the first, graphic novels from Eclipse that they later put out as a two-issue miniseries. Um, I think it, from what I could find out, it was reprinted in 2001 by Image. A uh, possible IDW reprint as well in a, around 2009, I think in a hardcover. I'm not sure if that one collected all five of the single issues or if it was just um, one of the stories. Um, so what I could find out about Marshall Rogers, uh, did a lot of illustration for uh, um, various magazines did some retouching work for DC in the mid 70s. Uh, Marie Se uh, Severin and Vince Coletta were kind of taken by his style. And um, I think one of the first titles that he worked on was Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, and then later did some Batman Detective with Steve Englehart. Um, apparently he was a, his Batman was a big influence on the 1989 Batman movie uh, and the animated series. The Laughing Fish was one of the stories that he participated in. Um, and then various other characters after that time, Silver Surfer, Mr. Miracle, Batman, Legends of Dark Knight, etc., Madame Xanadu. Um, and out of the two, I would say that this one was my favorite. These two issues were my favorite out of all of them just mainly because of his style. Uh, the writing itself was a little, <laughs> it's a little wordy. I, I sometimes think that people who have had their, this kind of an idea for a comic bubbling in their head for so many years, um, especially if he started thinking about this in 69 and this didn't get published till like 11 years later, some of those things, I wonder if it just breeds a little bit of overthinking and, and overwriting because you now have your chance to put out this story and you want to make sure that you have every single idea 
that you've had in your brain come out with the series. Um, but that's kind of how it feels here. The, the thing that I do really like though are um, Roger's really lanky characters and I really love the way he breaks up the page and his use of text, which we'll see kind of later on as well too. Um, basic kind of, they're, they're two detectives, two buddies. Um, one is just going through kind of a nasty divorce and kind of getting over that. He's living in the office um, drinking possibly a little too much. Here's some, here's another great use of some text. Um, and it's, I don't know, they kind of get roped into this, uh, this kind of murder mystery. Um, I won't go into too much detail about the story itself in case you do see it. I, I would recommend picking it up. Um, it didn't blow me away, but there were some interesting things going on. I, I think the biggest thing for me was just the layouts. I really, really enjoyed flipping through these pages a hell of a lot. Um, here you go. You saw that earlier too. Love, love these pages quite a bit. Um, yeah, but I think, I think overall though, it just didn't, it wasn't one that, uh, I didn't find the story as engaging. Um, there was a couple of neat things. This is a good page to kind of flip open to. There was a couple of interesting things that Rogers was trying within a page. This is a really good one. Two characters having a conversation with a flashback going down the middle. I don't know how well it worked. Um, not that it was jarring or anything, but uh, it did. I don't know. I, I found that it, it broke up the reading in such a way that just didn't flow as well for me. But overall, a really, really great two-issue series. And then in the back, we get Don McGregor talking about uh, basically the, the beginnings of Detectives, Inc. And I can't remember if it's in this one. We'll find out. No, so this one, we do get a, a, a sense of, he does kind of talk about first photocopied um, issues that, that he put out. In the next series, we get to see some still great movies. Um, and that's the thing that even in, up to this point that I do love about them. Um, focus. There you go. There's my hand. Drink some orange juice. Settle. Um, that's one of the things that I do love about my readings of Eclipse up to this point already. The amount of kind of extra material that they put in, whether it's a, a really dense letters page or it's this kind of, um, in Crossfire, for example, Vanier was uh, really talking about his work in TV and film. So there was a, there's a lot of, there's a, you get a lot of comic with these, which is really, really great. Um, we'll have a, just a quick flip through Detectives Inc. number two. Uh, again, <laughs> this was great actually. Really, really great scene. Uh, the coloring is interesting. This this guy with his uh, farmer's tan going on there. Um, and a little bit of little bit of violence. Uh, I do like the way he does his action scenes and uh, character there wearing the Eclipse, an Eclipse Comics t-shirt, strangely enough. Anyway, that's the first one. And in the next series, which came out in 1985, uh, this one was called A Terror of Dying Dreams. Yeah, 1985. And this one has uh, Gene Colan on art this time. So Bob Rainier and Ted Denning are about to meet Deirdre Sevens and sparks are going to fly. Um, we get a little bit of a different art style in this one, in as much as it's uh, it's it's the looks like the roughs almost that are kind of starting to get polished. Why are you fucking pulsing like that? Seriously, sorry about that, everybody. It just seems that I don't have much luck with cameras. How's that? You gonna behave? Excellent. Um, so we do get kind of a, a more um kind of preliminary looking art uh, with these roughs and then kind of colored 
um, at this kind of sepia or brown. Um, really, really still fantastic art, no doubt about it. I do like the way this plays and the text kind of lays on the pages, uh, kind of gets you the sense. But again, we're, we're back with, it's not as overwritten as the first two issues from McGregor this time, but there is still a sense of that for sure. Um, but really, really nice to look at. I would love to see um, if this did come out in a uh, hardcover or any other format. I would love to see this a little more oversized for sure. I think these pages would really jump out nicely. Um, yeah, and then at the back of this one is where we get the stills from the Super 8 millimeter um, Detectives Inc. movies that he was doing and a kind of talking about filming it and yeah i think from what i remember reading uh it's been a little while since i read this one i think that at the time there was um or just shortly after they played the film or films at some comics conventions um let's see if i close it will it stop doing that Maybe it's time for another camera, the third. Anyway, uh, I think he was playing some of these at comics conventions at the time. Um, I'm sure those tapes are floating around. I haven't done a good search online. I'm sure something is floating around on YouTube if you search Don McGregor and uh, Detectives Inc. I'm guessing something is gonna pop up. So as I said, that one was just a three issue mini series. There's a look at the other two covers of that one there for you. well worth finding with a lot of these eclipse titles you're not for the most part you're not paying a, a ton of money for these things um so if you do come across any of this i would always recommend giving it a shot um next on the list laser eraser and press button um so this one is the second series uh, and I thought I had all of the issues, but it turns out I'm miss missing issue three. Um, I fired through the six issues anyway, because each book has a couple of separate shorter stories. Uh, so there's really not that much of a thread going through them that you need to follow. I mean, their relationship does develop as it goes on, but um, it's nothing that you really need to read every single issue. Um, so it started off in a UK rock magazine called Dark Star in I believe 1979, created by Steve Moore and Alan Moore uh, under their pseudonyms, Pedro Henry and Kurt Vile. Um, violent Cyborg, so uh, <laughs> press button is a violent cyborg with button on his chest that delivers orgasmic pleasure when pressed and uh, a phobia about vegetation. Um, so constantly he's destroying any sort of plants or vegetables. Um, and sometimes the um, his enemies use the button on his chest against him to throw him into uh, a state of ecstasy while they either escape or try to beat the hell out of him. Um, also appeared in Sounds Magazine. And then in 1982, uh, Warrior Magazine, Steve Moore and Steve Dillon the first series, which I think is also a six issue mini series um, from 1984, a clip that Eclipse Comics put out was just the reprints of all that previous material. Um, I wrote this down from online press button originally a mild mannered florist. He gets a sentient telepathic anesthetic carnivorous fungus which attacked his body from the feet upwards. All the time it was consuming him, it was empathizing with him, apologizing for eating him and preventing him from feeling pain. By the time he was rescued, the only thing that remained was his head, right arm, and part of his chest. As a result of this damage, he became extremely embittered, especially against vegetation. When rebuilt, uh, he was fitted with a cleaver as a left arm and because of his lack of genital equipment an orgasm inducing button on his chest clearly marked press 
Unfortunately, this was sometimes used by later adversaries to disable him in Rapture while he was attacking them. Um, laser Eraser, cloned, renowned warrior, uh, 13, who was 13 years old but appears to be a grown woman thanks to growth acceleration of the cloning process. So there you go. Um, and to me, from what little UK stuff that I have read, it it really does have that kind of uh, punk rock, um, just really sleazy, really dirty kind of vibe to this book. Um, overall, the stories are, I don't know, there's a couple of stories that are questionable at best, um, sketchy at worst. Uh, there was one that really stood out to me, though, and we'll kind of we'll go through. I, I really dug the art, and uh, for the most part, the stories were pretty great too, uh, but it's not a book where things are sticking with you. Oh, and I should also mention in the back, we have a, uh, a fill-in story, Twilight World, I think that lasts for four issues and something else for the last two issues. When we get there, we'll have a look. I believe Thrilling World just goes for the first four issues though. Sorry, Twilight World. Let's have a look here. Is this the one? Yes, this is the one here. So looking through issue number two, we get this story that just kind of gave me the creeps uh, reading. It's called Sins of the Flesh. Laser eraser and press button, go to this world. Uh, and and it, it's kind of this hotel that's sort of a fleshy organism on the inside. Um, there we go, adolescent radioactive black belt, black belt, belt hamsters and uh, Pileus and Melisande, I believe, a love story. Um, so they, they enter this kind of thing, this fleshy hotel, um, with a creepy eye and all sorts of nipples all over the place. And at the end, realize that uh, it is a sentient being that is now slowly starting to devour all of the people who have come to kind of spend the day. Uh, they cut themselves free to reveal a giant kind of caterpillar uh, that kind of just carries on its way, devouring everybody else that's inside it. Just really disgusting um, and very, very strange to say the least. Um, overall, a fun book, but uh, I, I don't think it's going to be one that's that will stick with me. The art is a lot of fun. The front covers are fantastic. I love this front cover. And then issue number six. So it's issue number three that I'm missing. Um, and for the last issues, let's have a quick look here. Yeah, here we go. So for the last two issues, we get Citadel of Lost Souls, part one and two. Uh, Ektrin, I think that says, E-K-T-R-Y-N. Uh, I'm assuming... Well, I'm not assuming anything. Oh, there we go. Script, Pedro Henry, artist, Can Kennedy, letters, Annie Halfakri, and colors, Dondi Cox. Nothing stood out to me with this, uh, either of the backstories, to be honest. The first one, the, the Twilight World, um, sort of ended, but not really. There, It was a little bit pointless. It's... It, uh, it seemed to be going somewhere and just kind of peter out towards the end without any sort of uh, major resolution. Um, and then finally for tonight, for our first episode, um, Chuck Dixon and Victor Topi, uh, a three-issue miniseries called Mad Dogs. Couldn't find out too much information on Victor Topi himself. Uh, by the looks of things, though, this might have been the last thing that he did. Um, this one I just started searching before I, I kind of went live here. 
Uh, so the little bit of digging that I did, I didn't see, normally there's a Wikipedia and all sorts of these artists. This guy didn't have anything associated with them. Um, his art isn't so bad. Um, it has a pretty good feel to it as far as uh, we're dealing with a story here with kind of dirty cops, um, dirty hairy ish kind of uh, fascists um, kind of blends nicely from uh, things like um, the UK, you know, Judge Dredd and that sort of thing, dealing with these kind of characters. The, the one thing that I found strange, though, is as they're kind of put together, they're told, get me the craziest, put together a team that's filled with these unstoppable cops and I, I want, this is going to be off the books and we really want to put, want you guys to put a dent in organized crime here in the city and we don't care really how you do it. Um, only to be negated in the second issue where the exact same character kind of tells them that they've got to keep in line and, and you guys are going too crazy and what are you focusing on this kind of thing for? So plays against each other a little sloppily because uh, it really is just a turn on a dime from the previous issue but i mean you can see what you're looking at here you're not you're looking at some very base kind of uh uh comic book here um like i said dirty harry judge dread that sort of thing but even more base there really isn't there's sort of a um wire-ish type of element to it uh trying to show this kind of group of cops that uh don't fit into any sort of mainstream policing have done some questionable things but hey they're still pretty good guys and let's see if we can redeem them somehow um i don't know if it necessarily works that well by the end of the story but uh it serves its purpose um it's an entertaining enough ride for the three issues again with stuff like this because it's because it's only a few issues two issues three issues even if it's six uh, my tolerance for some of these stories uh, is a lot more because I know that there's there's nothing else coming afterwards. Um, the pages do get a little dense at times. Uh, I don't mind these layouts, but it's sort of, I don't know, it's, it's because there's so much focus on this one character, especially on these two pages, plus there's another guy that looks very similar to him. Um, it does kind of muddy up the reading as far as how many of these guys are there really. Um, Dinosaurs Attack, Giant DaCosta, I think, just got some of those recently. Um, so, yeah, we'll just have a quick flip through these ones. Again, it's if you find it for the right price, if you're finding these for 50 cents a pop, have a look. Um, the art is kind of gritty and dirty enough that uh, it held my interest. Um, but it is kind of uh, just an, you know, it's junk food, basically. Um, it's pretty good while you're reading it, but uh, after you're done, you might feel a little sick to your stomach. Uh, but there you go. What more do you want sometimes from comics? Uh, great looking ad for Aztec Ace there on the back. Scout. Uh, Dragon Chang as well from Tim Truman, uh, more Tim Truman, the spider, great, great series. This, this was really fun. The two, I think there's two different series, uh, two issues each really, really entertaining. And we'll just have a quick look. There's issue number three there. There you go. Thanks very much everybody for watching and, uh, I will be back to talk about more stuff. Uh, I'll try to figure something out better with this camera so we're not getting that zooming in and out. I wonder if I just need to be a little further away so it has to focus a little deeper. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. Um, if there's anything Eclipse-wise that you really do want to see or hear about, uh, feel free to post a comment. You can message me on Twitter. Um, like I said, I've got... Uh, a number of boxes at this point I can move stuff I'm I'm not reading in any particular order I'm just grabbing stuff out of boxes that uh, appeals to me in the moment so feel free to drop some 
recommendations. If there's something you want to see a bit of coverage on and have a look through, uh, I'd be glad to do it if I have it. Uh, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in, everybody. We'll talk to you.